Today I've kindly been invited to the Audi Women's Driving Experience Day at Mount Cotton in Brisbane. I'm going to be driving all their cars around the racetrack, trying different things and interviewing Lisa Wilkinson and Steve Pazaki. Okay, Steve, hello and thank you for your time. Absolute pleasure. And today has been fantastic. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Really? I was a lot more scared than I thought I would be. I thought I'd be really confident and yeah. able, but actually I um, was super scared, felt sick for most of it. And then, really? And then very pleased with myself when I mastered things. There's always that little <laughs> sense of achievement at the end of it, which is why yeah. I said what I said about um, don't be scared to sort of go a little bit outside your comfort zone because if you sort of just clam up, oh, I don't want to do that, oh, I'm going to look silly or whatever, I can guarantee you'll go home tonight and go, oh, I wish I just I hadn't chickened out. Yeah. So now you should be hopefully a little proud of yourself because yeah, yeah, you, you drove very well. I could say um, I wish I hadn't ploughed through all those cones. <laughs> and, uh, well, you should apologise to the cones actually, not me. So I did stop one my window down or to put my window down and say sorry. <laughs> you've just you, 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 you've destroyed my budget for cones now. They don't have to go and buy another half a dozen. Blue, right. Blue. <laughs> so I've got a few questions to ask you. Sure. That's okay. So what was your first car? My first car was a 1971 Mark II Cortina. Oh, nice. Yeah. My so, friend's mum had one. Though. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, and, and obviously, yeah, most Brits know what that is. Most Aussies sort of go, "Which one was that?" So, yeah, yeah it was um, metallic pea green. So P E A, not P E E. By the way, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that sort of pea green manual thing, and I yeah, modified it and did all sorts of stuff. But I was racing at the same time, oh, yeah. so um, most of my money went into the motorsport. So yeah, yeah I, did, I couldn't do too much. Of it. But yeah, it was a Cortina uh, from nineteen seventy one. My first car was green as well. Was it? Green, an Astra. An Astra. Yeah. Ah, Opel Astra. There you yeah, go. Nice. Yeah, nice car. And um, did your car have a name? It did. Yeah, what was it called? It was called the Queen Anne. Yeah. Oh. I know because um, there was so there was three. We had there was three mates. We were sort of three close friends, and I was the youngest of the three. So the first uh, of the three of us that got their license, um, sort of, sort of eight months before me bought this big Holden Kingswood from the 70s and this was just a, like a big American Yang tank. Mm -hmm. So we all just call oh look at that, that's huge, it's like the Queen Mary. You know, <laughs> and so that's that started thing. So the next guy, Roger, when he got his, he also got a, a large Falcon. So that was the, the QE2, that was the Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> so I ended up with this little Cortina and we're going, I don't know, what do we call this? That's the Queen Mary, that's the Queen Elizabeth. So we looked it up um, and uh, oh look, you know, Apparently Queen Anne was quite petite, so I ended up with the Queen, Queen Anne. Anne yeah, good. so that's how that came about. Simple that's, as that. Yeah, it's fantastic. Did mm. you ever race it? No, not at all. No, it was a pile of junk. It would have ex the rust in it would have exploded. So <laughs> no, it was just a, a run around car. As yeah. I said, all my money went into the into the racing. Yeah, exactly. What car did your parents have when you were growing up? Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that that's a good one. I, my folks had. Uh, we were a Holden family. Oh yeah. So. Um, yeah, so we had a, a Kingswood yeah. in, in the family and a Tirana, so sort of the, yeah. the big one and the medium-sized one. So I really um, went against the grain by getting a Ford. Mm -hmm. So the Cortina was sort of, so they were sort of, oh, we what asked it from the family. Almost. It's funny <laughs> how, yeah, exactly. Most people think they don't care about cars until yeah. then you have the one that's opposite to what they've got. Yeah. And then everybody cared. Um, so yes, uh, they had uh, they were Holdens, uh, yeah, Kingswood and a, and a, and a Tarama. And was that named? Were they named? Was no, they it was named? just a no. One was this goldy colour, and it was so yeah. We, we sort of said it was metallic urine actually, oh. and so that's what we sort of called it. <laughs> As kids, we sort of teased uh, Dad about it, but um, no, they didn't have names. No, they didn't. No. Do you have any uh, kind of standout memories in that car? Any kind of disasters or funny stories? In my car? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I ended up I ended up doing pizza delivery with that car <laughs> because I was, I was looking for a part-time job. I had to fund the racing. I was at uni. And so for me, pizza delivery was like the ultimate job yeah. because I was paid to drive. And as quick as I could in most cases, I had to get the pizzas hot to the, to the customers. And I had pizza. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, those two were like, oh, this is actually a really cool job. I wasn't paid much. So it was also my pizza delivery 
car whilst I was in uni. Yeah, there you go. The Queen Anne delivering hot pizza all over <laughs> Melbourne. Imagine all these people that have eaten your delivered pizzas and they're... And they could come and drive with you now. Yeah, exactly. Like, hang on, that's a guy that used to drive with that yeah. metallic green pile of junk. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So, what car do you drive now? You said. Uh... Yes, yeah, so I, I have an RS6, an yeah. Audi RS6. Um, so, yeah, the most powerful station wagon nice. on earth. So, yeah, if I could do pizza delivery now, I could do a lot of them very quickly. <laughs> There's a lot of space uh, in there. A lot of space in that. Stuff. Exactly right. With a V8 in it. Um, I think I drove that today. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, the, the RS6, is it's a phenomenal car because it um, it looks like, well, it's, a, it's an estate. It's a, it's a wagon, but um, it's incredibly fast. So most people don't pay attention to it on the road, and I yeah. like that. It's very understated, mm. um, very Audi, I suppose. And But, yeah, when you want it to go, it goes yeah. like, yeah, a very fast thing. Yes, yeah. as I found out. Mm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. A really cool car, yeah. yeah. And what are your favourite songs to listen to in the car? Do you have like a set playlist that you... Uh... Yeah, no, I, 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 it's funny, you ask people about their music and everybody says the same thing, I've got eclectic taste. Yeah. Everyone says I've got a bit of everything. And I, 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 I definitely fall into that category. So anything from, I love blues. Yeah. So, you know, big fan of, uh, you know, B.B. King and Albert King and yes. uh, the Howlin' Wolf and all those guys. So that, that, that I really love. But then... I'll also listen to some, you know, nineties hip hop, the stuff yeah. that I listened to when I was, you know, learning to drive and yeah. driving uh, for the first time. So, yeah, no, a bit of everything. So, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a real mishmash. Are you a podcast and audio book? Very much so. Well? Yeah, yeah, huge podcaster. Yeah, I'm sort of getting sick of like most people, commercial radio. It's just ads. Yeah. So no, podcasts are huge. So I listen to. I'm a, I'm a I'm an engineer by trade. So I'm a, I'm a I'm a nerd. So I listen to science podcasts, oh, astronomy yeah. podcasts. Oh, um, yeah. I'm listening to one on the BBC about um, the history of maths, believe it or not, which oh, sounds yeah. incredibly dorky, and it is. Uh, <laughs> but it's also quite fascinating how mm. uh, some of the things that we know about numbers has come about. So yeah, I love podcasts. Absolutely yeah. love them. Yeah. Yeah, it's, great. it's a great, I love it because it's a great time of that use of that kind of dead time yes. as well to actually learn, to keep learning. Yes, absolutely, yeah, exactly. And commuting is just a... It's a chore now, isn't it? It's yeah. just, uh, everybody suffers bad traffic. Yeah. So yeah, I'm with you, yeah. May as well do something semi-productive with yes. it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's true. Now, you're a racing driver as mm. well. Mm. And so my audience is very much about um, child, child seats, child restraints. And as I understand, you have to wear a harness and sit in a seat, which is pretty much like being strapped into a child restraint. It's exactly the same and actually most of those child seats are modeled off yeah. racing seats so if you look at the racing seats we have in the cars yeah and you look at a, a standard a baby capsule or a standard baby seat they are almost identical so yeah. they've got the six point harness um, they've got the wings they've got a head support and it's nice and snug so yeah. no I, I love looking at those things they just look like a mini version <laughs> of my race car they really do um and so and i mean that tells us something that you know what we do in a in a high risk environment like a race car mm. um, and the solutions to keep people safe are yeah. the same things we then go, hey, that's what I should be doing for kids. So yeah. I love the fact that those technologies are the same, just downscale. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it is. It's yeah. exactly the same. I was speaking to someone from ANCAP actually a few weeks ago and um, I visited them and they were saying that actually they learn a lot from, um, from motorsport. From yeah. motorsport. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, we crash a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just all of that. So yeah, yeah. we are uh, crash test dummies in yeah. many ways. Um, so what you learn from from our crashes, which are typically harder because they're faster. Yes. Um, yeah, if you can translate that across, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. And um, listen, you have to stay tightly restrained in those things for long periods of time. Like children, you have to. I think we in them, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. And sit in them for very long periods. Any any advice on? Uh, what makes you more comfortable that we might be able to use for our kids to make them more comfortable? Well, and it's something, yes, and it's something that you should do yourself as a driver, and that is um, have the seat more upright than you think. Um, we've got this notion that uh, reclined is more comfortable because that's what you do in a lounge, and you sort of go, oh, especially if you're gonna go for a long drive, I hear this a lot. Uh, I'm gonna go for a long drive, so I'm gonna sort of maybe wind the seat back a little bit because I'll be yeah. more comfortable. Actually, the opposite is true. You'll actually tire more quickly because whenever you do something, say you've got to turn, you'll actually be a little bit out of the seat and now you need to support yourself. Uh -huh. So constantly sort of doing that as you drive makes you more tired. So if you're a little more upright, 
Um, the seat's got your weight, it actually supports you better and you actually don't fatigue yeah. as quickly. It's exactly why we do it in the race car, they are mm. a little more upright. And uh, it's why you should do it for either a child's seat yeah. or uh, your own driver's seat when you're uh, driving the car. So yeah, definitely more upright, uh, closer to the wheel and um, yeah, if you've got any sort of ability to, to sort of make the seat a bit more snug, some of yeah. the modern seats, you know, they can adjust like on those Audis. Uh, I would do that as well. Get it yeah. closer to you. Yeah. Oh, that's good advice. Mm. Um, any advice for um, parents? We're often driving very distracted. Mm. Um, I know some of the things today were about stopping because we're maybe looking down at our phone. But I think for parents, a lot of the time, we're having to look mm. over our shoulder into the back. So any advice for parents who are driving distracted or very tired a lot of the time? Um, yeah, ideally I'd just say don't. don't. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it, I mean... I suppose the first, you know, tactic to solving a problem is knowing of its existence, mm. if that makes sense. So I think if you can acknowledge that you are tired or distracted, then at least you can start, you're aware of it and you can come up with solutions. So that if that means that, you know, you try to, whatever you can, it's a, it is a tricky one. It's one of the trickiest uh, questions where you get asked because oh, so you've got someone screaming in the back. Well, you don't want to sort of let that go, but you've also got a job to do, and that is to not crash your car, because that's a bigger problem than yeah. dealing with a distracted child. So understanding that you are compromised means that you then can come up with other solutions. That means you've got to stop more. Mm. That means you've got to, you know, um, uh, try to ignore them for as much as you can whilst you're doing critical things. Yeah. Um, but it, it, is, it is incredibly challenging, yeah. 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 Do you ever drive with kids in the car? No, I don't have kids of my own, but I've got uh, nieces and nephews, and so yeah. I'm, I'm Uncle Stevie to a lot of kids, <laughs> which is cool. I love them. Um, so, yes, yes, I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And what do they think of you driving? Do they have a comment? Um, no, they always go, go faster. Go for, why, why don't you do what you do in the race car? Come on, <laughs> come on. So they're actually annoyed that I'm driving so slow, which is yeah. just the road limit. Um, but I have taken most of them on a, on a track. and oh, had a bit of fun. Yeah, I haven't gone properly fast but i've gone yeah. fast enough and they they love it they yeah. think it's the best thing ever so awesome. yeah a day at the fairground kind of thing yeah. you know so yeah they love it have you got any funny anecdotes of uh, having having kids in your car or not really they're pretty no. well behaved well yeah no yeah, exactly because they're always just yeah other than wanting me to drive faster yeah. um occasionally i'll do silly things in the car so um it sort of having the this the, the practice, I suppose, from motorsport. So if, if there's a if there's a song they love, I'll actually make the car sort of dance to it a little bit in the traffic. So I think other people do that as well. Yeah. So no, not 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 um, not per se. They're they're pretty pretty yeah. good kids. Yeah. I can remember a similar thing with my dad when I was a kid. There was a particular part of a Bruce Springsteen song that he used to drive with his knees and take his oh, hands right. off the okay. And um, you know, for a split second, but as kids, we thought it was like the most hilarious, amazing thing, thing yeah. ever. Yeah. 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 No, I definitely do the. Little thing with a brake or whatever. Even if you just at the lights and you stop, if you just slightly release and yeah. say so as the you know, the particular songs going, they find that pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, now you facil facilitate the driving experiences here for both men and women. Um, who would you say are the better drivers, men or women? Or who do you find? Oh, uh, uh, okay. I will <laughs> say. Are you allowed to say? Yeah, no, no. I and I get this a lot. Men are better drivers. Yeah because more men are interested in their driving. Mm. So that's the difference. Women are the better students, yeah. and there's no reason why a woman can't be as good as a man, or better. Yeah. It's just that on the whole, as a population, more men are into driving and, yeah. and, and developing their driving. So in other words, doing these drive days and maybe onto motorsport than women. So. It's not to say that one is better than the other. It's just that guys tend to gravitate to that. So, yeah. and if you do it enough, you get better at it. Yeah, and that's yeah. purely it. Um, females are definitely the better students. <laughs> females definitely listen yeah. uh, much more readily than guys do. Guys come to these days kind of, like I mentioned on our day, expecting to be good, expecting to impress you as the yeah. driver, as the pro driver. Um, and maybe even wanting to be discovered. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I said at the start of the day, which is which is yeah, which is really funny. So, but girls will just go, okay, you're the pro. I'm here. I'm the student. Tell me, and they just do it. Yeah. They listen and they just do it. So there's no other layer of trying to impress me or whatever. So yeah. they just get on with it. So they're the best students. Yeah. I don't know. 
Do you ever have couples on these days? And yes. If do you? Yes. Do they ever fall out? Are they competitive? Um, uh, yes, they do. But we actually force couples to not be in the car together. Oh, on really? Day. Yep. I split couples. Oh. <laughs> I do split couples because I and, and and for no other reason I just say. You, you two drive together a lot. Yeah. Um, so rather than having the same thing about, oh, you know, I, or a adding to this, I told you so, or see, this is what I've been saying for years. Yeah. At uh, both genders, uh, uh, yeah. either way. Um, it's just easier to keep them split, learn your stuff, and then later on you can discuss what you thought or yeah. felt or whatever. So it's easier to split couples, basically. Yeah. 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 Oh. Um, me and my husband are very competitive right. um, with driving, and we even... Our, our, our wedding anniversary we spent at the go-kart track. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's <laughs> impressive, yeah. If I did that, I'd be shot. My wife uh, likes driving, but yeah, if I if I took her to a, a go-kart track, she'd murder me. Because <laughs> you're just doing work. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and what's, do you have any funny anecdotes that you're allowed to share from the uh, driving experience? Do you have like a, a an outstandingly funny one where someone kind of took out an entire... Yeah, I, or... yeah, I've had uh, I've had people turn up to these drive days in full race suits. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, there's one in particular. Um, one guy we picked up from a hotel, not far from here, actually, on the Gold Coast, and um, it was a thirty odd degree day, and we picked him up from the hotel, and he was in his full quilted race suit, wow. race boots, gloves, and and the helmet bag. And I actually asked his colleagues, and I was like, wow, I mean, it's stinking hot and you're wearing that gear and you don't need that for our days, obviously it's just road cars. And I asked his colleagues and I said, um, has he been wearing that all morning? And he said, yeah, he actually came down to breakfast and actually ate with the, color, with the gloves, gloves no on. Way. Absolutely, yeah. So we've had some people are very, very... Um, Eager yeah, yes. to, to to be with us on the wow. day, and that was a so that was that's one that really still who, who does that yeah. who, who wears a, a quilted race suit to the breakfast table and eats with the gloves on that's you know because they're so excited yeah. so yeah so there's um yeah people do behave yeah. um, in strange ways sometimes yeah. when they're out of their comfort zone yeah. I was very excited but I didn't go to those things. no you didn't go to those things thank God yeah, so you may pass out from heat stroke yeah. yeah. Um, has any, does anyone ever crash? Yes. They do? Yes. Yeah. Uh, very, very rare, yeah. but it does happen. Yeah, yeah, look, as I said, I've been doing this for over 20 years, so you can't expect to do these drive days uh, for that long without yeah. having... No, no one's ever been hurt, and, yeah. you know, uh, we've, we've damaged the odd car. Mm. Uh, nothing too serious, but, yeah, yeah you, you're going to get crashes. It's yeah. as simple as that, yeah. yeah. I've been really surprised today because I normally... You know, I test things for their kind of practicality for families and everyday life. But I've been really impressed with, with kind of what can be done with mm. the cars. Like it's, it's not something I normally test. No, no, so, um, yeah. And yeah. it's difficult to do that on the road anyway. Yeah. So that's why we're here. <laughs> so exactly, yeah. No, no, the, the cars are typically more capable than you realise. Yeah. And it's only until you do a day like to, yeah. today that you appreciate what they can do yeah. and uh, and how they can save your life potentially that's yeah. the other side of it yeah well hopefully i don't have to use anything that I no exactly. so do we <laughs> but it's nice to know yeah uh, that yeah it's like you know it's nice to carry an umbrella in case it rains yeah. you know so you've got it there and then yeah. it won't rain, it won't rain. <laughs> that's brilliant thank you for your time absolute pleasure thank you, thank you.